I'll probably get yelled at just for saying this, but diversification is the only free lunch in town. And if you give up your contact list, and this is for everybody who maybe has the cloud-based CRM systems or dumps all of your information into online hosting applications and things like that. Yes, it's convenient because your people all over the country can access that data, but you no longer control that data. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Incident Report presented by Quest Technology Management. I'm Paul Burke, Director of Technology Communications. Every week, I'm joined by VP of Sales and Partnerships, Adam Burke. The Incident Report brings you conversations with thought leaders, business innovators, and channel mavericks to help you stay productive and agile in a changing technology landscape. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Incident Report. This is episode 75. I am half your hosts. My name is Paul Burke. I'm glad you're here. Across from me, Adam, how are you doing today? Good, Paul. Excited to be back. Had an eventful last couple of weeks, wrapped up channel partners and all sorts of other good stuff going on. So yeah, no, excited to be here. And most importantly, Adam, you and I both watched the new Alien Romulus trailer yesterday. Like, we'll get to business in a second, but how are you feeling? I'm, I'm excited about it. I've, I've been an alien, aliens. I think I think when we were kids, we watched aliens probably about 27 times. Probably didn't have any negative ramifications on that one. But uh, great, great series. Love that show. I'm super excited for it coming out. Yeah, no, I'm pumped. So nerd, nerding out on that one. Yeah, so uh, after this, go nerd out on it. Uh, unless you don't like blood, then do not nerd out on it and just yeah. take our word for it. It looks entertaining. For those of you who you know can't watch Aliens, I think there's a new, a new season of Bluey out. So that's always you know you can check out Bluey. And that's kids and it's got a great lesson. I think Paw Patrol just put out a movie uh, within the last couple of months. So go watch that. Yep, at different strokes. There you go. Let's get into it. So we got a we got a story. We got to talk about one reason because I don't totally understand the ramifications of it, and two. Adam, you you thought this was really important to discuss, so let's get into it. It comes over from Channel Futures. ScanSource plans to create a new subsidiary company called Nuco that will function as an agency alongside its existing tech service distributor, Intellisys. Nuco will be a customer-facing agency aimed at driving more value to suppliers Intellisys serves. It will operate separately from Intellisys, but leverage Intellisys' supplier contracts the move allows ScanSource to pursue the emerging agent model of selling agencies. So big article, 30,000 foot question. Why is this such an important move? It was a big deal. They And it's funny, they announced this, I believe they announced this on the main stage of Channel Partners. So for those who don't know and aren't in the agency world, Channel Partners and Intellisys was one of the very first back in the day, it was called Master Agent. I think now the appropriate term is Technology Services Distributor. I think TSD is the preferred term. But so as one of the original Master Agents, they would hold contracts with all of the suppliers. And the suppliers would all get together in Vegas. Intellisys would throw some big parties. All the sub agents who are the sellers, the people who have end user relationships would basically leverage Intellisys's contracts with the suppliers. And I don't, I'm not quite sure who the publicist was that thought it was a good idea to get on the main stage at the largest sub agent get together in the world and announce to everybody that they're creating their own agency. I'm not quite sure that was a good call, but it is part of the progression we're seeing in the acquisitions in the transitions in the consolidation of these larger and larger agencies rolling up into others. And I think, I think why this caught so many people's attention was ScanSource was one of the first to come into the channel and, and make a big acquisition, right? So Intellisys was one of the first organizations to kind of get into that public sector or private equity money one of the first ones to do that. And then behind them, obviously, we've, you know, we've talked about the different TSDs out there who have taken private equity. So all of the thousands upon thousands of sellers out there who put their business through these, these master agencies are kind of like, well, shoot, like, is this, is this going to become the next iteration? Right. So Intellis mm-hmm. is about two to three years ahead of the other guys. 
um, in this transition. So if you're paying attention, it, it, it set up some, it set up some, some concerns. How do you think the creation of this new co is going to impact existing relationships? We haven't seen it yet. We're not quite sure exactly what's going to happen. And everyone on the channel is talking about it. But what people are concerned about is that there's basically going to be a conflict of interest, right? You have, so, so we come from the VAR world and we've worked with this distributors forever. So imagine, so it just, and I'm not saying this is anything wrong about what's been going on. It's, it's an evolution of business. It's just people making decisions and everyone needs to make decisions about what's right for their business. A lot of people are being very emotional about this, which I think is probably the wrong path. I think you just need to observe what's going on and then make a decision of what's right for your business. A lot of people are taking this pretty personally, and I'm not quite sure that's very productive. There are definitely some portion, you know, some torches and pitchforks coming out in this scenario. So people are afraid that basically they're sending their business to a distributor mm -hmm. and that distributor now has all their contacts and now is also directly aligned with a competing agency. So we're a VAR, right? So for people who listen to us or who are in the VAR world, imagine that you go to, you know, TD, um, Tech Data, Cinex, or Arrow, and all of a sudden, one of those distributors decided to start their own value-added reseller. And so we've been putting orders. So the way, the way people buy hardware, if you don't have a direct relationship with, let's say, HP or Microsoft or Cisco or any of the major manufacturers out there, you go to Disty, you go to distributors, and they give you access to more things to sell, right? So it's kind of mm -hmm. like talking to customers about what they want to buy. And I'm going to go over here and I got to work with these people on what's on the shelf. What can I sell? They take a small percentage of, of the markup, right? So that you, you get the wholesale rate from the actual manufacturer. The distributor marks up a couple points, maybe two to five, whatever the points depends on your relationship. And then the, as a reseller, you add your margin because the manufacturers don't have the front end sales folks to actually design the solutions, scope out all the processors, all the different optics you need, all the stuff that you need to actually make this stuff work. So mm -hmm. you, as a, as a value added reseller, you help organizations select the appropriate parts list, and then you go to distribution and they help you source a lot of different relationships that you don't have to manage yourself. That's the same thing that the TSDs do rather than charging a couple points to the reseller. And then the reseller marks it up. They just facilitate the residual income that gets paid on the back end to the agents and they take their points from that residual income it's the same concept it's distribution they're taking a couple mm -hmm. points and they're facilitating a transaction and they do all sorts of other value add stuff too they have engineers and specialists and all sorts of stuff too but it, it's a distribution model and in some people and i've talked to some people in the var space like man why are these agents so fired up why is everyone so ticked off and i'm like well imagine td cinex or imagine Arrow or one of the or Ingram or one of the huge you know distributors out there, multi billion dollar companies. Imagine all of a sudden they just announced at their large annual summit, hey, by the way, we're starting a VAR and we're going to buy some of your competitors and go direct to your clients too. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, huh? One of the main things I'm really really curious about is why did they make that move, and is that move something that others are going to make in the future? In the article, it talks about Nuco purchasing books. Agents can sell their books. Is that, do you think that's the principal reason so they can scoop up books? Well, if you peel back the onion a little bit on this one and see how, how does a distributor make money? So let's just, we'll just use round numbers for, 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 for simplicity's sake. Let's just say that a, an agent, they sell a million dollars worth of monthly reoccurring revenue. Different contracts okay. all over the, all di different contracts. They sell Ring Central, they sell, you know, switch data centers, they sell QTS, they sell, you know, eight by eight or, or, you know, cloud services, whatever it is. And let's just say that they, for that million dollars in monthly reoccurring revenue, let's say they average, again, just round numbers, these numbers don't mean anything. Let's just mm -hmm. say they average 10% residual, which means, Every month, all the suppliers in their book of business are billing their end customers a total of a million bucks, and they're getting commissions of 10%. So their total net 
or their total, their total residual is $100,000. That $100,000 right now goes to Intellisys or to Avant or to Talaris or to AppDirect or whoever the TSD is. Okay. So that book of business, when they say book of business, that represents $100,000 of cash flow every month to that TSD. Now, the TSDs only keep between, some of them have arrangements to keep 10 all the way to 30 or 40% of that book of business. So the TSD is going to keep, let's just keep it, we'll just keep it in tens again. We'll just say they're keeping 20% of that residual. So they get $100,000 in their bank account. Mm -hmm. They get to keep 20 grand and they pay the sub agent whose book of, whose book of business, $80,000. That's their commissions. So they take 20% of the $100,000 that gets paid out by the supplier community. The problem is, and I think what I, my, and again, I have no inside knowledge about this whatsoever, but my, my assumption is the model for growth was not as fast as they would like to see it for increasing what that 20% represents. Right. Mm -hmm. They, they took on an investment. They were acquired by ScanSource. They got part of a, a larger roll up and they were maybe adding or losing or whatever books of business. And they decided, Hey, we need to keep more. And there, there's two ways you can keep more. Now I'll tell you, I was wrong about, you know, the inside baseball thinking what the TSDs were going to do. I thought, and, and again, maybe someone else did. I thought the TSDs were going to go after maybe the supplier side of the business. Because if you look at the, if you look at the, the kind of the, the pyramid here, you got, you have at the top, you get the TSD on one side, on the left-hand side, you have the agents and their, their customer relationships. On the right-hand side, you have the suppliers. We control the delivery of services, integration, mm -hmm. solutions, all that kind of stuff. So we have, we have pretty good margins and the agents get 80% of the residual. So they have pretty good margins in the TSD world. And the TSDs are up there and they're operating on 20% of the residual from what's coming in from the suppliers. I thought TSDs were going to maybe get more involved in the supplier side of the business, right? So maybe they're going to start their own Microsoft services practice, or they're going to start their own, you know, data center operation practice or managed services practice. Why did you think that was more likely? There's a great book. It's called Only the Paranoid Survive. I suggest you read it. It's about the guy, the guy who founded Intel wrote the book. It's, it's a great book. And our business is we do man services. We do professional services. We do integrations, mm -hmm. right? So I'm always kind of looking at how do we defend our house, right? How do we make sure that we're, we're taking care of our business? So I thought, you know, people were going to maybe come after that. Not so far they haven't, right? And again, this isn't, I'm not saying it's right or wrong what people are doing. I'm just saying it's good to be aware of it. Okay. So if I understand, you're saying that you thought because Quest has been successful doing that. So they're going to come in and emulate that style. There are basically two, two paths you can take to increase mm -hmm. your, your take home, your net revenue, right? You can either supply the services yourself mm -hmm. and capture more, of the, capture more of the residual income. Or what it looks like they're doing is they're going to buy books of business. So when they buy someone's book of business, so that initial example we were talking about was million dollar monthly reoccurring. They, that, that agent gets paid a hundred thousand dollars a month from the, to the TSD and the TSD takes their 20% and pays the sub agent $80,000, right? So it kind of trickled down. Now they're buying that book of business. So they get 100% of those commissions. So when they buy a book of business, are they putting their own agents in control of that book or the agents they buy the book of business from, does that agent just kind of go off and say, Hey, I won't ever contact these people again? Like what, how does that work? And the channel has been great. It's created a lot of, you know, lifestyle businesses and regional players and organizations that have great, great businesses, but they don't really necessarily have an exit plan. So that's mm. where these, the, that's where these rollups have happened, right? There are people have bought these books of business. Some people stay involved. Maybe they have some performance attachments to that transaction where, Hey, you just stick around for three years and make sure everything doesn't go to crap and, you know, mm -hmm. you keep booking business. So that's, that's a possibility. But yeah, for the most part, these guys are, tra these guys and gals are transitioning out mm. or, or taking maybe a leadership role. Now, I don't know who Nuco is going to buy. I have a couple ideas, but 
they, they're going to buy some operators and they're going to basically, now they own those contracts. They own a hundred percent of those contracts or 90% or whatever they work out. They've instantly like quadrupled their, their revenue, their keep for those. Now they're going to do it with debt and they're going to do it with financing. So they're going to have to figure those shenanigans out. That's what they're doing is they're, at least my theory is if you're, if you're growing the pie by adding more and more agents and supporting more and more agents, you're only increasing your keep by 20% of whatever the suppliers are, are paying out to the, the agent base at the end of the day. So they had to, they had to, they're, they're changing the game and like it or not, now just remove yourself from the situation. Like just, just take a breath and step back. From a business decision standpoint, the folks within the, the distribution world, it's dangerous, but if they get it right, they might make a lot of money doing this because they control a ton of suppliers, the largest. Intellis is, is the first you know, master agent, TSD, to come around. At least I think one of the, the first one of the first national big ones. They have all the relationships with every supplier. Mm-hmm. And now, now they're going to have their own direct agents that have access to that entire book of business. And as much as everyone's, you know, you know, oh, that's horrible. Oh, that sucks. That's terrible. at and is not walking away. Lumen's not walking mm-hmm. away. Equinex isn't walking away. None of these, none of the suppliers are going to walk away from Intellisys because it, it's a move. They're, they're, they made a business decision. So I don't know. It's going to, it'll be interesting how it, how it plays out for sure. This might sound like a ridiculous question, but why is it so important that this new co- is separate because the article mentioned a number of times like oh it'll be a separate entity it doesn't conflict at all with intellisys like why is that such an important aspect so they're calling that out because imagine all all of your customer records all of your contacts all of your historical data on who bought what when why did they buy it email transactions contract dates costs commissions Everything goes through these distributors. So agents put a lot of faith in, in their master agent partners because mm-hmm. they're, they're trusting that they're going to get paid. And, they're, and they're, in order to get paid, the TSDs have to see the contracts and have to see the, 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 the payments and the structure and the term dates and the back office and all the stuff that goes along with making sure that people's commissions are correct. So the idea is, at least what they're what what they're what they were trying to do. Again, I'm not sure who their publicist is. They might be handing their resume out a little bit, but they own all that. They're they're the big they they've been the big dogs for a long time. They have all that data, so they're really trying to communicate. Hey, no, 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 it's a totally separate group. They're not going to have access to your database, but that that's what people are concerned about. I mean, because you could just knowing, just here's the here's the thing that people don't like to talk about. Just knowing someone's refresh schedule on their, their vendor contracts and their licensing arrangements is, is like shooting fish in a barrel. If you know who's making the decision on a licensing renewal and when that licensing renewal is coming up. I know firms, they have certain letters associated with them that they have entire business units that just go out and hunt renewals for contracts for like warranties for different hardware suppliers. And all they do is figure out who's purchasing those agreements and, and when those contracts are up and they, they go solicit them and say, Hey, I'll, you know, I'll cut you a deal. I'll give you a cost plus model. I'll do whatever to get that, to get those couple of points. And these are millions of dollars of transactions. There's real business opportunity here in knowing contract dates key customer contacts. We talk about insecurity all the time, right? Every time you get additional convenience, you give up a little bit of your own autonomy and your own security. This is kind of the tough love scenario for some of these folks that they probably don't want to hear. And I'll probably get yelled at just for saying this, but diversification is the only free lunch in town. And if you give up your contact list, and this is for everybody who maybe has the cloud-based CRM systems or dumps all of your information into online hosting applications and things like that. Yes, it's convenient because your people all over the country can access that data, but you no longer control that data. You no longer really control that environment, right? You're, you're trusting 
that whoever you're subscribing to is going to do what they say they're going to do. Mm. And every time you give up that convenience, uh, when I first came on board Quest, we have a legacy CRM system and, and Tim is very, very proud of our platforms and what we have, but he is never putting that stuff in the hands of anybody else because your customer data, your customer, your partner data, your relationships, that is extremely, extremely valuable. So you got to be really, really careful where that stuff resides. And I think that that's why they were saying, hey, you know, it's a totally different, separate organization. That's why that was so, because people are freaking out. It seems agents, TSDs, suppliers, it's such, the whole system works on a lot of trust that everybody's going to respect everybody else's boundaries. Yeah. And it seems like the, the IntelliSys and this new co, it's kind of pushing a different boundary that people weren't expecting. Yeah, well, it's 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 money driven, right? It's a I'm all again. That's I don't know. I don't know why people are doing what they're doing, but I do know that that you know organizations from an investment standpoint need to see a, they need to see growth and they need to see returns. And if you're not getting it the way you want it, you need to change your your tactic. And this is a pretty significant change in tactics. I'm I'm curious to see because there are other agencies, there are other organizations that they own portions of other companies, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I know everyone's clutching their pearls on this one. And and by the way, just to be candid, part of this I think is is on the sub agent. And I know this is gonna. I hope this doesn't offend some people, but part of this is on a lot of the sub agents and a lot of the agents out there push and push and push the TSDs for less percentage, right? So they want to, they want to take home more. They push them for, for 90% splits. You know, they want to take home 90, 95%. And then they push them for pre-sales resources and they push them for additional services and all that kind of stuff. Well, all that costs money. And all that reality wise, suppliers can only sponsor so many get togethers before, you know, everyone starts tapping out. So if you, if you look at the business model of, of these TSDs, they they make their money from the suppliers. They make their money mm -hmm. from from holding the the percentage of the suppliers' residuals, but they employ a ton of people. And there's a lot of it's not capital intensive like building a data center and dropping a couple million dollars for you know for generators and things like that like that we've built. But it's still it's a lot of people. And when you get private equity and other people involved, they're going to want to see a return on it one way or another. So. Part of it, I think, could be a little bit on the master on the on the sub agents. Part of it's on the private equity and the public sector folks and the investment folks. And I think part of it's just the evolution of the channel. We've talked about it for 15 years now. That convergence thought around, you know, what's a TSD? What's a supplier? What's an agent? You know, what's an integrator? What's what's really the difference? How's this all getting mixed together? We're definitely in a transition period right now where other TSDs are coming out and staking their claim in the ground that they would never do this or or I think I think the phrasing I heard yesterday was this is interesting phrasing we do not currently and have not ever had plans to go direct I was like huh that's an interesting way of saying something on a recorded line we do not we have not ever and we do not have plans of going direct that was that was an interesting phrasing I heard yesterday. There's a lot of moving parts out there. And again, I think organizations can really benefit from diversifying where their income is coming from and also paying attention because I, I think what's really freaking people out is the IntelliSys and ScanSource was the, is the first mover. They were the first mover on public sector money. There are a lot of other people who have brought in outside investors in the last you know five years. I think a lot of people are kind of worried that, shoot, was this another Vanguard moment where we're kind of seeing what's going to happen next across the board? Do you think maybe others are just going to watch IntelliSys right now and see how successful it is? And if it is successful, then kind of switch to that model? Everyone's still competing for, so if you are a sub-agent and you are looking to sell your book of business, the good thing about Nuco and the good thing to hear is that, hey, there's another place to sell. Right. If you want to mm -hmm. sell your book, that's it's more competitive. So you're gonna you might get a higher multiple for your book of business if you're looking to exit. And this model, it does work if you have cheap debt and you can keep kind of if you can keep the customer base and you can keep the residuals coming in, it is a successful model as long as mm -hmm. the valuation as long as the valuations play out, right? So a lot of these firms are buying books of business and they're giving the people that they're buying 
They're giving them a piece of the action, a second bite at the apple when the next roll up happens, right? So, mm. hey, I'm going to buy your book of business for eight, 10, I don't know, I've heard as high as 20, probably lying, but hey, you know, 20 times their residual. And that's a huge check. And then they're getting a second bite at the apple when that firm ultimately gets sold to the, to the next organization. These are, I mean, these are serious cash generating organizations. It's, you know, you have a five person shop that's selling a couple million in MRR. That's a good uh, income stream. It's just cash flow. So a lot of mm -hmm. these guys are, go are gobbling it up from a financial model. Not really worried about the customers, but that's another thing. So you're mentioning the TSDs and the amount of money they have to spend within the TSDs. The article mentions technology expense management or TEM. Is that kind of what you're talking about or is that, is that different? I wasn't quite understanding what technology expense management was. Technology expense management is, it's a, it's a service that Nuco is probably going to put together for them. So one of the things that's classic in a lot of this agency, well, all this agency stuff for this part came from the telecom world. One of the moves, the selling moves to get into an account would be you'd approach them and say, hey, Mr. Customer, let me come in and help. No one likes managing your phone lines or your connections or all your circuits. Let me come in and manage that for you, right? I'll handle your billing. Okay. I'll test out what, what's actually being used, what's not. And usually the pitch was, I'll save you anywhere, you know, hey, we'll save you anywhere from 20 to 30, 40% on your telecom bills, right? That's my value to you as, a, as an organization. I'm going to come in and do telecom expense management. So same jujitsu move, different different. So that's 2008, you know, 2010, whatever telecom expense management It's 2024, same motion, just different pitch. Is this something that Nuco is like, you un can uniquely offer with their no. relationship with Intellisys? Is that kind of the, that's a story. I mean, paper does not refuse ink. Marketing people can put any kind of they want on paper, right? And telecom expense management is a story that you're basically saying, Hey, Mr. Customer, I know how to buy stuff and coordinate and manage your property and your IT and your subscriptions. And I can do that more efficiently than you can. It's probably, it could mm -hmm. be true. Totally could be true. You know, and basically they, they, you outsource a company outsources the, the purchases to a telecom expense management or excuse me, mm -hmm. a technology expense management. So rather than just phone lines and things like that in, in circuits, you're saying, no, let me, let me help you manage your Microsoft subscriptions and your Workday subscriptions and your Datadog and your, you know, there's 80 applications that these companies use. So yes, you could, but again, like everyone, we all gotta, we all gotta think about this. What's the risk there to that business then? They better trust that organization that's doing that telecom expense management. The big caveat there, and you see large enterprises doing this, they have what's called strategic sourcing initiatives. And strategic sourcing gets paid based on how much they save the company. So they're grinding, but then you're going to tell me you're going to bring in technology expense management. If you're a CEO or a CFO, one of the first things we ask people when they come into our office is, how do you make money? How do you make money, right? A vendor comes into us, someone's selling to us. How do you make money? How do you have a successful quarter? What's good for you? Because that's going to drive their behavior. So you tell me that you're going to walk into a CFO or a CEO's office that's been running strategic sourcing for 10 years, and you're going to tell them, hey, guys, I got this for you. Their first question is going to be, well, how do you make money? Oh, I get paid on the back end from all the suppliers that I decide to have you buy from. Oh, really? Do you? Oh, well, I mean, could work. It totally could work. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just saying that move, you better, you better bring some additional value other than I can help you buy Microsoft licensing. You'll be dead in a week. Not to be pessimistic or cynical. It's honest and I appreciate it. It's, it's been helpful for me because I was reading the article and, and you were, you know, fired up and interested in talking about it. And I'm like, oh, I got, I got so many questions. Yeah. I mean, we're a supplier for Intellisys. We're a supplier, right? We've been a supplier for a long time. We were a supplier for a lot of the TSDs. Like we we're in the, we're in this soup with everybody too. Right. And. We got to figure out the best way to support the partners and the best way to support the end users. And that's, it's a fun balancing act, man. It's def definitely never a boring day. I appreciate you breaking it down. Yeah, it was a good combo. I think we're going to hear a lot more about it. I got a note earlier that there's a town hall coming up early April with them. So I'll be, I'll be curious to hear the story. I'm sure people are going to be talking about it a lot. 
So yeah, if, it, if, if anyone's ever got any questions or wants to chime in or, or post a comment or, or tell me I'm an idiot, that wouldn't be the first time. And uh, <laughs> please reach out. We'd love, we'd love to talk about what people are thinking. Also, speaking of town halls, and we got a Quest Bootcamp series coming up. We do. Yeah, we got a Quest Bootcamp series. We'll put the first link in the show notes here. Um, we rolled it back. We did it for the first time last year basically helping folks understand a little bit about different things that they can sell in the technology space. So we're, we're kicking that off. Our next one is on April, Wednesday, April 3rd. We're going to be talking about complex IT sales and things like that and taking larger chunks of the, of your clients, you know, spend in the IT space and things like application development and integration services and all that kind of stuff. So it's a six part series. I think we're doing, it's about an hour long. We record it, we send it out. It's, it's available resources, got great feedback last year, and we're looking to do it again. Did you know that I'm co-hosting this thing with you? Are you? You're co-hosting yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. I don't think you knew that. I don't think you knew that, but I am hosting it with you, Adam. I'll be throwing you questions. It'll be a little back and forth. That's the plan. Nice. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'll be yeah. good. That'll be, I, yeah. I, won't just be ta- I won't just be talking to, uh, talking to a, a slide deck by myself. Yeah. April 3rd, we'll have a link. Very helpful. Great response last year. So looking forward to bringing it back. Adam, have an amazing weekend and talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much for listening. The Incident Report is brought to you by Quest Technology Management. With over 40 years of experience, Quest is a leading technology integrator working seamlessly with your staff and systems to achieve your IT goals. Learn more about everything they do at questsys.com. And if you have questions or suggestions for the podcast, you can always email Adam and myself at the incident report at questus.com. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.